Hello! In this video, I'm going over collecting custom logs in Microsoft Azure Log Analytics. Alright, thanks for watching this video. Uh, in previous videos, I showed you how to collect uh, Windows event log data and do some searching on that. Uh, but what about applications that have their own application data log that you want to import into log analytics and maybe do uh, searching or uh, issue uh, notifications on if a certain event pops up. Uh, in this video, I'm going over how to collect the custom logs in Azure Log Analytics and then uh, do some searching on that, on those logs once they're imported. So with that, let's get started. So there's four steps that we're gonna go over in this video. First is creating the log. Now, if you have an application that's generating a log, you don't need to create the log, but in this video, uh, I'm gonna create a custom log that I, it's a, just a PowerShell script that I, uh, I'll put some data to for the purposes of, uh, of showing how this works. Um, after that, we're gonna collect the log. So that's just uh, importing that into uh, Azure Log Analytics. Uh, this does require the Microsoft monitoring agent on the server. So if you don't have that on the server that is generating these custom logs, you wanna go back to one of my previous videos and watch how to add the Microsoft monitoring agent to the server. Um, then we're going to define custom fields. So when the data is imported into uh, log analytics, it kind of comes in as one long text stream. What defining custom fields does, it allows you to break that into chunks and then uh, report or uh, search on the custom fields instead of on the entire text string. And then we're going to do some searching. Okay, a couple things to go over real quick before we get started, actually. Uh, the delimiter. Uh, the delimiter is one uh, one log entry per line. Uh, that is the typical case for most log files. Now, Microsoft uh, Log Analytics does have the option to delimiate on a, spe a very specific uh, set of um, uh, timestamps. In my testing, I wasn't able to get to that to work, and I should note that what I'm showing you here is in preview with Microsoft, so this isn't full GA yet. So there's a couple of those features uh, we will run into that just don't seem to be working right. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, that's working, but uh, most logs that I've seen, custom application logs, always have an entry per, per line. Uh, setting a timestamp delineation is not going to actually set the timestamp in log analytics, so um, really it's not that important. Um, no circular logging. If the logs are circular, you have to disable that. Um, and ASCII or UTF-8 only is supported. Now this is important if you're outputting logs from PowerShell because PowerShell outputs to UTF-16 by default. So you wanna set your encoding on PowerShell to UTF-8 or any other application that's writing uh, logs. Okay, so here's a script that I put together uh, for generating a fake custom log. Uh, I've got a source set of my custom log one. Uh, that's just gonna be a part of the output string. It's gonna generate a code from 1000 to 3999 uh, if that code is in the 1000 range. It's gonna uh, gen generate an error message saying working as expected in the 2000 range system warning and in the 3000 range it will be a uh, system error. It's gonna write that output with a date stamp into a log file. You can see here that I uh, set it for encoding UTF-8. It's just gonna write that to a file, wait a few seconds, and then do it again. So with that, I'm actually gonna run this. And you can see I already ran it once today, but it's just adding, adding these entries into the log. Okay, so now we're gonna collect the custom data. And before we do that, we have to enable a pre preview feature. As I said before, uh, this is in preview, so you have to actually enable the preview feature before you can uh, import custom logs. And then to do that, you go into the portal and go to quick start under general. Um, Microsoft's made some changes to the portal, so hopefully this is where it's located at uh, when you watch this, but um, you have to go into the old OMS portal. Uh, Microsoft announced a couple weeks ago that they're uh, uh, depreciating this portal, uh, but there's no way to enable the preview feature in the Azure portal, so it's still needed for a couple things. 
So I went into settings up here and go into preview features and you can see there's an option to enable custom logs. So just click enable. I already have this set. Uh, you'll get a warning message that should pop up on your screen that just tells you uh, to be careful. It's preview, there may be bugs. Once that's enabled, we can go back and we can go into advanced settings in the Azure portal and we're gonna go into data and you're gonna see custom logs. Now I already have one added here. I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but let's go through and add a custom log uh, that we created. First, it's gonna ask you to choose an example file. So I'm gonna choose the My Custom Log 1 that we created in the previous step. And next, I'll slide this over so you can see the whole thing. So uh, the delimiter right now is set to new line. There is a timestamp option, as I said before. You can select that. Uh, this is what I got every time I tried it. So again, go back to the preview feature. It may not work as expected, but new line is fine uh, because every record in my, um, every record that my script's outputting is in a new line. So we'll click next, and now it's gonna ask, ask for a path. So I'll copy this. And here you can do, um, if you want every log file that's generated, you can do sim something simply like asterisk.log. Um, if maybe you have a, uh, like a prefix of a date stamp on every log, you can do asterisk my You can do something like that. In my case, it's just one name. So I'm going to just add my custom log. And you can also specify additional logs or different additional paths uh, if you need to. And then I'm gonna click next and I'm gonna add the name. And you can see it's going to append the underscore CL. It does that uh, so it doesn't get mixed up with any names that Microsoft uh, Log Analytics already has, like system names and stuff. So any custom log will always have the underscore CL. And then you can write a description in here and click Done. So now it's added to my custom logs. And you can go in and search. Now, it normally takes it's 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes, depending on how things, I guess, busy things are in the background. Uh, make sure if you're trying to search for this that you refresh because um, uh, that sometimes seems to help. I'm going to go through and um, I'm going to use the custom log 2 that I already created so we don't have to wait for it because I know that data is already coming in. So. In order to search, you can start by doing a simple search. And that will pull back everything. And you can see here my custom log two, which is the one that I set up earlier and we're gonna use now. Um, that's already pulling in data. So if you wanna narrow your search just to that one log, And here you can see all my results. Um, at this point, uh, at this point you can do uh, things like just search for, like if we wanted all error codes equaling 3000, in the 3000s, we could do a search. Uh, let's see here. Oops. So now I can pull back, I can do a search uh, through everything that is ingested and look for error codes equaling uh, 3000. And that's gonna work, but it's not very efficient in the way that it searches because you're going through a whole text stream. So what I wanna do instead is add a custom, uh, custom field to this. So custom fields allow you to uh, break that raw data apart so you can uh, do searches on just part of the, the raw data or, or cut within custom fields instead of the entire record. So to do that, I'm gonna start by clicking on this ellipse down here by custom, uh, by the raw data and extract fields from 
my record. So in this case, I'm just gonna simply select uh, the error code, and then I'm going to give the custom, uh, the field a name. So we'll call that error code. And I'm gonna change its type to numeric and extract and give it a second. Now you can see it's found a lot of matches here. Um, sometimes there's two, like 1005, uh, but this is pretty random, so I wouldn't expect too many duplicates. But here you can see it found the 1000s, um, 2000s, 3000s, so it's been able to use AI in the background to figure out what I mean when I selected that field. So I'm gonna save that selection because it looks like it got the data that I want. Now I'm going to click and extract a second field. This time I'm going to do the error message. And that's going to be a text, so I'll extract. Now here I have three error messages that I'll put system error, um, system warning, and working as expected. And you can see here it found two of them. It found system error and it found system warning and knew what I meant there. But as expected is not the full message. It's actually working as expected. So I'm going to come here and see if I can find one of these where it says as expected. So right here you can see it missed part of that. So all I have to do is modify this highlight. And I had a problem with this uh, because my screen's too small. So I'm just going to temporarily make my screen a little bit smaller so I can select working as expected. And then I'm going to click extract. And I'll change that size back to 100%. And now you can see it found 30 matches on working as expected. So now it found all three of the messages the way I want it. So I'm going to sit, hit save extraction. Now if I go back into my workspace, go into advanced settings, and let's see data, go into custom fields. You can see I have the two custom fields outlined here. Now one of the things uh, to note about this is your custom fields don't take effect retroactively. It only takes effect on new entries that come in. So I'm going to go back to this, um, open up my custom log 2, So I'm going to run this again. This is custom log 2, the one that I'm working with. I'm sure the uh, custom log 1 isn't actually importing yet. I'll give this a couple minutes to run and import the data, and then I'll show you how to search on those specified uh, new custom data fields. All right, the script's finished running, so now we're going to go back and search the custom log to see if we can find the custom data fields. So we start out by just typing in the log name. And you can see it has found or already started to import the one that we set up, but we're going to keep working with two because that's what we have the custom fields for. Now, if we switch to table view and go over here, we can see error codes is being generated, but not for all of them along with error message. These are only the new entries that we added uh, after after um, enabling the custom fields. As I said before, it, this is not retroactive on data that's in log analytics. It's only new data coming in that the custom fields will be applied to. So before we did something like, um, something like this to search for error code three. forgotten R there. And here it pulled up everything, but um, what we can do now that we have a custom data field assigned, we can do something like where uh, error code and it add, 
and like custom logs, it appends the CF for custom field at the end of every um, custom field you apply or create. So we can say uh, where error code CF starts with three. And you can see it's pulling back the uh, four entries that are in the 3000 range. As another option, you could go in and do something like a summarize. Uh, like a summarize off from error message or whatever you wanted to do. And here you can see uh, because so much of the log was uh, didn't have the custom field enabled, we're getting a lot of blank error messages. But here for the new ones, we've got a system warning uh, working as expected and system error all showing up. So uh, that's it. That's how you import a custom log, um, define custom fields, and search against it. I hope you found this helpful. Um, Please subscribe if you like these video series that I've been creating. Uh, that helps me know that people are watching it and that I should continue creating new ones. Thanks again.